some of you might know that I was uh, appointed uh, in 2008 as the first part-time CEO of the Australian New Zealand Solar Energy Society, as we were then known, 2008. And I couldn't have foreseen what was about to happen in terms of the solar market in Australia. And as a result, what that would mean for our organisation, how we had to professionalise and modernise and become, um, you know, really the, the voice of solar in this country. Um, as you know, solar boomed. Uh, as an industry, we have collectively delivered uh, fantastic economic, social and environmental outcomes for the people of Australia. Uh, this industry now employs more than, or has employed up to 20,000 direct solar jobs. Now, if you extrapolate that out to indirect jobs, all of the other people who are involved in our industry, then we're talking about a really significant number. So we're a big employer. We bring jobs to regional and rural Australia. In fact, as you all know, solar is strongest in the mortgage belts of our big cities and in the bush. You know, and that's where we get a lot of work and that's where we employ people. They tell me that we're approaching five gigawatts of combined solar PV uh, installation so far in Australia. Fantastic number. Um, and of course, in doing this, we provide our customers with competition and choice. We actually bring down electricity prices, not just for people who install in solar PV on their own roofs, but actually uh, we've, we've shown that we, we actually help electricity prices for all electricity customers. Uh, and that's a topic for another, uh, another lecture entirely. In 2009, there were, there were 7,000 installed solar systems. Uh, I remember Muriel Watt putting up a slide at the conference in 2008, and we were celebrating the fact that we had put in 28 megawatts of solar PV on, in that year. Um, today, there are uh, more than 1.5 million. It's true, I think, that every year is a big year in the solar industry, and 2015 was no exception. Uh, we started the year 2015 in, in about as bad a position as any industry can be in because we had very powerful forces lined up against us wanting to take us out as an industry. Unprecedented that a government would target a successful industry to wipe it out, like it just beggars belief. But, as you all know, that's where we were. Um, we, uh, uh, but, you know, we, we responded to that. Uh, we didn't just roll over. Uh, we, uh, as an industry, stood up. And, and just as importantly, maybe more importantly, we harnessed the support of our customers, uh, the solar-loving public of Australia. Uh, and so we were able to send a, a strong message. We took a stand and ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, we won. Politically, the small-scale scheme is now untouchable. I walk through the press gallery at Federal Parliament House and I have seasoned journos that come up to me and say, gee, you boys would be pretty pleased, wouldn't you? Right? Everybody knows you can't touch solar. <laughs> They'll come after you, right? So, so that's a fantastic win for our industry. Uh, and let me tell you that you wouldn't want to go into Parliament House and talk about wind power today because they literally blow you out of the place, right? So, uh, so we stood up and we reaped we reap the rewards of doing that. Um, but it does, uh, it does cast my mind back to when we called the first Save Solar Community Forum uh, here in Brisbane, well, in Redcliffe, actually, uh, in the seat of Petrie. Uh, and we started by putting out some advertisements in the newspaper. We called a meeting of the local installers, and I think there were 10 people who came to the planning meeting. And I said, folks, see this auditorium? It's our job together to fill it. And uh, uh, on the evening of, of it, was a, it was a Wednesday night at dinner time. Uh, it was winter time. It was cold uh, in Redcliffe, right? So it's not exactly you know, de downtown Brisbane. Uh, but, I, but I was doing the expectant father thing. I was pacing up and down and, and thinking, crap, I wonder if anyone's actually going to come to this thing. <laughs> you know, we've made a big statement here. Uh, and I'm very pleased to say, but by the time they played the last post at 6pm in the RSL, the RSL had directed us to close the doors because we'd exceeded the OHS occupancy for the room. Uh, and I'm really pleased to say that we went on to do that around Australia 11 more times. 
This was some of the rallies that we called. We called this rally around Australia with two weeks' notice. Uh, we had 33 pickets outside uh, electoral offices across the country. Uh, here's a photograph of one of the bigger ones in Sydney. And I love this, the lone protester on the Gold Coast. Does anyone know this bloke? What's his name? Kev, I think. I understand. He was, so he was, so we, we had the, the full range of response. It was absolutely fantastic. Well, I'm pleased to say that uh, our research institutions are still some of the world's very best when it comes to solar technology. The Australian Renewable Energy Agency arena has not been abolished despite the government having a bill in the federal parliament today called the Arena Abolition Bill. Um, we're starting to see our industry mature, to consolidate. The fly-by-night operators have largely come and gone, uh, and that's really good news. Standards are improving. Uh, we're seeing fewer installation errors. Uh, there's even work happening now to collaborate to get DC isolators off rooftops. Hallelujah. <laughs> right now, it's interesting. I've got a couple of big uh, global companies who are, who are working with us to identify well-run, large-scale solar companies in Australia to acquire them. And that's because solar is becoming a big mainstream global business. And again, that's a sign of maturity in our industry. Um, our industry is no longer being driven by unrealistic and unsustainable feed-in tariffs. Uh, there is some modest support through the RET, uh, but the fact remains that distributed solar energy is just cheaper than electricity you can buy from the grid. So we're building this industry on the fundamental economics, uh, not on the solar coaster boom and bust. And I think it's a great place for all of us to be. Millions of Australians have uh, experienced solar firsthand on their rooftops. If not them, then their retired parents or their neighbours or their community group. I'm pleased to say that the Clean Energy Finance Corporation has not been abolished. Um, and there's a bill in the federal parliament called the Clean Energy Finance Corporation Abolition Bill, right? Uh, and I've got to say that, that saving those two inst institutions was probably one of the proudest things that I've been involved with uh, in this role. We had to absolutely capture the support of the crossbench senators. We needed at least three of those little small parties, of those senators, to actually vote with us to stop those institutions being closed. Uh, and so we had to work hard, and we did. We worked hard with Ricky Muir from the Motoring Enthusiast Party. He gets it. Uh, with Glenn Lazarus, been a fantastic supporter for solar. Uh, and with Dio Wong from, uh, from the Palm United Party in Western Australia, again, a great supporter. So um, uh, we did it and we saved, we, we saved them by one vote. Uh, and uh, you know, if I leave that as a legacy, then I'd be you know, really pleased that, that our organisation has, has achieved exactly that. You, you might be pleased to know that we're actually starting to build some positive working relationships with the Turnbull government. We're once again working with uh, Minister Hunt's office, uh, who's, who has responsibility for solar policy. Uh, we have close contacts across the government and across the parliament. We've just announced uh, three inaugural patrons of the Australian Solar Council, Dr John Hewson, former opposition leader and leader of the Liberal Party, uh, Christine Milne, uh, former leader of the Australian Greens, and Simon Corbell, who's the, de the current Deputy Chief Minister, Environment Minister and Energy Minister in the ACT, and a pioneer of the large-scale reverse auctions process uh, that's now being used elsewhere. I'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, and it's fantastic. I mean, we, we are uh, a, a non-partisan organisation. We will support any party that supports good solar policy. And we built a coalition from Clive Palmer to Christine Milne when she was in the job. You know, so this isn't about politics, this is about policy. Uh, and we will always fight in the best interests of our, of our industry. Last Friday, actually, we took Senators Lionhelm and Wong on a trip to Forbes. Uh, we visited Vast Solar's large uh, uh, concentrating solar thermal power plant that, that incorporates molten salt storage. And they were really fascinated about what's happening with energy storage and wanted to see this firsthand. Uh, and I've got to say, he's not here, so I can say this. 
Um, our, our national president, Steve Bloom, gets a gold medal because he spent four hours driving the bus up there and four hours driving the bus back and, uh, and uh, had to bite his tongue at some of the things that he was, he was hearing in the back of the van. But a good education process, so uh, definitely worthwhile. Uh, we were instrumental in ensuring that the Federal Labor Party adopted a policy of 50% renewables by 2030. Uh, and we provide a lot of ongoing advice to, to several large political parties, so not just to the Labor Party. In Queensland, we played a pivotal role, uh, encouraging the new government to put solar policy at the heart of its program. Uh, now, as you know, they also have a plan to deliver 50% renewables by 2030. Uh, several large-scale solar auctions are underway right here in Queensland. Fantastic news. And for the first time, there's a full and fair-minded review into the price of exported solar power. Not a windfall, unsustainable feed-in tariff, and not a punitive, well, you should go and negotiate a rate with your retailer, right? But let's actually have a, an open and full investigation. That's what's happening. We also work uh, almost daily with the governments of uh, South Australia, um, New South Wales, Victoria, uh, ACT and, and elsewhere. So back to, back to the federal level, um, I'm pleased to say that the tone has definitely changed under Prime Minister Turnbull. Uh, the war against solar is over. Uh, there are no new bushfires being lit every time that we turn around. The Prime Minister's positive language is making a difference. We're starting to see large global investors look at this market once again. Uh, and, and as of last year, they'd fled. I mean, they'd just fled the scene. There was no way that they could invest. Uh, and so that's really positive. Um, however, we, we, we contend that more needs to be done. Uh, the Prime Minister told his party room that he would not reverse the anti-solar and anti-climate policies of his predecessor. And we think that's a bit rough. I mean, why should our industry be the price that the people of Australia have to pay to get someone decent as Prime Minister, right? Why do we have to be the price for that? Now, I don't think that's right. I know that he doesn't believe that that's right. He understands this stuff well. Uh, and so we've got to, uh, on one hand, we've got to encourage him and push him to make the change. On the other hand, we've got to be sensitive because we know inside his own party, there are plenty of people who'd love to tear him down on this issue. This has become a proxy for a factional war inside the Liberal Party. And so we've got to kind of, we're on a bit of a tightrope, but, but, but it's a sophisticated response and that's what we need to do. That's what this calls for. And so that's what we'll continue to do. Um, I'm also told that the, the Liberal Party will take some pro-solar policies to the next federal election. That's encouraging. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what those end up being. But the ultimate test for us must always be what a government does, not what it says. Uh, and uh, with a federal election that could be as little as four or five months away, and that will definitely be held next year, 2016, um, we, we know that we have to put the pressure on and make, and, you know, keep them honest, basically, in the process. Um, Another issue that though, uh, you know, the, the whole political issue is not the only thing that we're facing. The other thing which is uh, a problem is the network connection approvals. You know, I've talked to one uh, member in North Queensland dealing with Ergon, and they tell me they've had a thousand PV connection uh, applications approvals lost. There's been a thousand of them that have been lost, right? Um, and that's just staggering. Uh, and so there are a lot of um, uh, sort of non-official ways in which our industry can be frustrated. Um, and, and I know there's been a lot of frustration, for example, around uh, the fact that there hasn't been a set fee for, uh, you know, having a look at a collection, collection approval, uh, particularly one, a larger scale system. And so you go through this process, you don't know what you're going to pay, you don't know how long the process is going gonna, is gonna to take, and you don't know what the outcome is going to be at the end of it. Well, that's fantastic. That's great business certainty for you and your customer, isn't it? Um, so we, we saw in uh, Western Australia, Synergy announced this week that it was uh, coming out with a new tariff specifically for solar owners, which was going to be a premium retail tariff to claw back the lost revenues as a result of people going solar. That's outrageous. 
So it's not, so I've got to say that the, the work's not over, it just means that we can focus on some other really pressing issues for our industry and not just be fighting for our very survival, which is what it's been for the last couple of years. Uh, and I, I, I want to work closely with you to harness those stories, particularly where you can give me concrete examples of uh, where you're dealing with the utilities and it's just been, you know, it's just not fair. Uh, because we, we do have a good relationship with, with the Queensland Government. We have access at the highest levels. Uh, and I want to take these back as concrete examples. I don't want to talk in general terms. And I want them to actually start some investigations and take some action. So uh, that's the other thing that we need to do. In the, uh, in the lead up to Paris, uh, we have a great opportunity to tell a positive story about solar. Um, the, the debate globally has been framed, if you take action on climate change, yeah, that's great, but it's really expensive. And so we have to keep doing what we've always done because we want to save money and protect our economy. That's, that's the frame, that's the debate, right? Well, we know in our industry that is simply wrong. We can deliver economic outcomes, greater competitiveness, job creation, lower electricity bills, competition, right? And, oh, by the way, as a throwaway, we're going to save the planet at the same time. So we are proof, living proof, that you, it's not an either-or debate. It's actually these things are both. And so we as an industry need to raise our voice to say, no, we, we have a vision for a better Australia, Australia where, we, where we're smarter, where we, you know, we, we have great jobs, where we have a good standard of living, and we can protect the environment at the same time. So uh, that's a message that would be great for everybody to, to sort of get behind. The Australian Solar Council. So today, the Solar Council is more influential than I ever could have imagined when I took the job in 2008. Uh, we have a serious media profile. Uh, I'd average uh, at least one major media interview a day. Uh, and in fact, the next one's happening in about 15 minutes with the people of, of Perth. Politicians at all levels know who we are. Um, what we do and say really matters. So um, uh, apparently we've got, their, we've got their attention. I often get phone calls from leaders of the, of the big parties or from leaders at state government level who want to pick, pick our brains on solar policy before they announce it publicly. Two things, they want to make sure that they're kind of on the money, but secondly, they want to make sure that we're on side. Because if, they, if, if we're not, then they know they're going to have, a, they're going to have a, a sales problem. And that's exactly, as an industry, where you want to be. You want to be inside that decision-making circle, and I'm very pleased to say that today, our industry, in our organisation, is absolutely in that place. Um, we are the voice of the solar industry, from the solar industry, for the solar industry. We are not conflicted by other agendas. We're a highly democratic organisation. One member, one vote. We have eight, oh, sorry, nine volunteer board directors made up directly out of different parts of the solar industry right across Australia. I'd like to acknowledge one of our directors, Anthony Sachs from Queensland, Infinity Solar, uh, with us here today. But we have that from across the nation. So we, we, are, we are solar for solar. Um, we employ about eight staff across the country. We've got almost a thousand members in every state and territory. Uh, that makes us Australia's largest renewable energy industry body. In terms of profile, we continue to punch well above our weight. For those of you who are members, thank you. For those who aren't, now's a fantastic time to join. Get involved. Join and support the organisation that supports you. This, uh, this really matters for us. We compete with for-profit, sorry, with for-profit companies who produce magazines, hold conferences and events, and like to masquerade as industry representatives. For-profit companies, right? Their objective is to maximise the financial return so their directors can go on holiday to Switzerland every year. We are a not-for-profit organisation from the industry. We do these things to actually maximise income so we can reinvest it into our industry and collectively grow our market together. 
Uh, I'd like to say a few words about the Energy Storage Council. 2015 has also been a, a, a watershed year there as well. Uh, today we have over, over 65 members. Uh, we, we were founded uh, in September 2014. So uh, basically any company that's doing anything of any seriousness in energy storage is a member of the Energy Storage Council. Uh, you can see some of our uh, gold members and our silver members up on the screen. And here are some of our bronze members as well. Today we're working with members uh, to, to tackle two pressing issues. And a couple of slides here courtesy of Glenn Morris, our National Vice President. Uh, but this is uh, some fantastic access control and mechanical protection for your battery storage system. Uh, that's great. Uh, this one here, uh, Glenn tells me, no battery fuses, no battery isolator, no mechanical protection, no supportive cables, no clue. But hands down and away, this one here is my favourite. <laughs> this is fantastic because I'll tell you why. Can you see the gap there between the two battery cells, right? That's where he parks his bicycle. <laughs> um, uh, actually, f for us, uh, th this is a big problem. It's not just a problem for, uh, you know, for uh, our technicians, right? For you actually working on these systems that they need to be safe, right? Because we don't want to put our people at risk. It has to be safe for householders. And I actually, the thing that worries me is actually first responders. You know, we're going to send our fireys or our ambos into a situation where they don't know that there's a battery system on the premises. It might be lithium ion, it might be something else, but uh, it might be something that won't appreciate it if you come and pour water on it, right? Might make things way worse and might emit some no noxic gases that might actually kill you in the process, right? So we, we have a duty of care responsibility. Now, uh, there is a, a gap in Australian standards, so we're responding to that. There was a question earlier from Century US uh, about exactly that. So the Energy Storage Council is about to now announce an industry best practice program in three parts. The first is a white list of appropriate products. Actually have a look at the inherent safety of the products that are being offered. Right. Two, uh, we want our retailers to sign up to a commitment to fair sales representation. In solar, the worst story I heard was a, 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 actually an elderly retired woman who'd been told by the salesman that her solar system was going to produce quite well on a cloudless night with a full moon. Right? I mean, you know about this, right? This is what you do, right? Well, well um, imagine the scope for, um, I mean, not what you do, but what you hear, right? Uh, but imagine the scope for that kind of nonsense in the energy storage space where people are sold just lies, right? And, and so what that will do, it will, it will evaporate the, uh, the trust that the community and governments have in our industry. It'll just disappear. So we need to be um, honest and forthright about what it is that we can provide and, uh, and provide you know, that honest advice. Third is that we need a best practice guide for installation and maintenance of systems. Uh, our best practice guide, which is about that thick, is currently uh, about to circulate for member comment. And I'd like to just do a shout out to Peter Coburn in Adelaide, who's actually sat down and done the hard work of actually breaking the back and writing that in the first place. That's a bloody big job. And guess what he got paid for it? No, uh, he did it because he knew that it has to be done. Uh, and that's the guide that will circulate amongst our membership to make sure that we've got it right and that we can collectively sign up to it as a voluntary industry code, because that's the best we can do. The Australian standards will take two years before anything, you know, even if everybody agrees, right? So we need an interim, and then we, and it's our job to market to the public to say, energy storage is too important just to leave alone, right? You can either, you can either deal with professionals who are committed to a safe, sustainable industry, or you can deal with somebody else, right? But, but you, you know, you, you're kind of taking your life in your own hands if you choose to, people, to deal with people who, are, who aren't prepared to sign up to these sorts of standards. That'll be, our, that'll be our role. The Energy Storage Conference was held in, uh, in May, in September this year. Uh, it was really interesting. We had 4,000 delegates at the event in May uh, and 1,500 of them registered for energy storage. 
That's extraordinary. Almost half the delegates registered for the energy storage stream. Uh, it, it featured over 30 presentations, including from people like Sumitomo Electric, uh, Enphase Energy, DNGVL. It was sponsored by Enphase. In October, we launched our energy, global energy storage report, uh, and we worked with peak bodies in California, uh, in India, China, um, and other organisations. This is really interesting. If you haven't seen this, it's definitely worth a look. Uh, directory.energystorage.org.au. We've put up there a directory of everybody involved in the energy storage business. So we've got a category. I'm looking for a consultant who does large-scale off-grid system design. Well, they're on there. Uh, I'm looking for, um, you know, uh, for, for microgrid, larger scale energy storage, it's on there. I'm looking for products that I can put behind the meter for residential storage. So we've got over 60 suppliers and products currently linked. If your product is not listed there, please contact us. We want to make this the go-to reference uh, for our industry so that um, people can uh, you know, have a good listing of what, what is available. Strategic partnerships, uh, we, we've uh, formally entered into partnerships uh, around the world, the US, China, India. Uh, we collaborate with the Europeans and the Californians. Uh, to finish, I just wanted to tell you about a couple of events in 2016. The first is to just let you know that our magazine, um, you might have just got it in your, in your post box, actually, uh, has just been rebranded Solar and Storage. And the storage component of that has grown uh, significantly. On the 17th of February, we're holding an Energy Storage Council one-day conference here in Brisbane at the Hilton Hotel. We're doing it in conjunction with the Queensland Government. And we're looking at how Queensland is becoming the smart energy storage space. We noticed that already there are long-term companies that are actually based in Queensland. Um, Century UASA is a great example of that. Uh, but we have uh, you know, other um, companies that are basing in Queensland. And there's some great research going on here as well. So I think Queensland actually has the ability to, to, to steal a march on everybody in this and actually position itself as a centre of excellence for energy storage. Um, there are, uh, the, the, the Energy Minister will keynote along with the Science Minister. Uh, there are limited sponsorship opportunities available. If you're interested in sponsoring, please see Laray uh, at the end of this. We're doing uh, part two of our uh, 4777 workshops, Glenn Morris, coming around in February. Um, we'll talk to about a thousand installers around the country when we do that. Uh, and once again, uh, we, uh, we, we're looking for some sponsorship and uh, very happy to say that, uh, and thank you to Supply Partners for, uh, for helping us out with that one as well. Um, on the 16th of March, we're holding a, a Energy Storage Meets Parliament Day. I want to get as many Energy Storage members as possible to come to Parliament House in Canberra. We're going, it's being hosted by um, Senator D.O. Wong from the Palm United Party and Linda Reynolds from the Liberal Party. And we're actually talking to the crossbench, cross-party group on innovation and science. We want to educate them. You'll be able to showcase your products. And then we're going to split into working groups. And we're actually going to go and meet with as many members and senators as possible to actually educate them about this stuff and tell them about the interest that there really is in the community for what we're doing. Um, I think that, that will be helpful in uh, setting the agenda uh, and educating them. Um, I want to I wanna sh show you a, a very short uh, video. And uh, before I do this, just see, see how many people you can recognise from, uh, from Solar 2015 held this year held in... Uh, in uh, in Melbourne. It's an industry leading exhibition and we want to be involved. It's a great way to catch up with a lot of our clients who also come here. We want to show the latest model of our products. We want to present the Australian customers about our new service and solutions. We wanted to talk to the people who have been seriously involved in the industry for many, many years. Hi, it's Kirsty from the Australian Solar Council. I'm one of the event organisers here at Solar 2015. We're here in Melbourne at the Melbourne Convention Centre. And we're using this exhibition as a platform to get out there and show people our new products, people to get excited about what we're doing. It's the end of day one, it's been a great day. Last year we had two and a half thousand, 
people come through our doors and at the end of day one we already are looking to beat those targets. It's a great place for us to advertise our business. We talk directly to installers uh, and solar companies and it's just a great place to be to push and just demonstrate our Bosch products onto the Australian market. Our exhibition space is sold out and all our exhibitors seem really happy with the people they've met and the contacts they've made. To promote our business, to grow our brand awareness, to get new customers and to have a good time. We've had three streams of presentations. We've had an industry and policy session. We've had an energy storage session for the first time ever. And we've also had our professional development session put on by SEA. Great speakers and there's been a great range of uh, exhibitors as well. Anything from your solar monitoring, your batteries, your uh, inverters, your racking, and also obviously your panel, panel distribution. We've had a lot of different people come through our doors today from all different sections of the industry and from the public. These are the key decision makers, these are people that, that are passionate about the, uh, the solar and renewable industry. That's probably one of our main purposes of the Australian Solar Council, to facilitate and create a good meeting ground for different people to interact with each other. And you never know, you might get that, that one lead that makes it all worth it. The key dates to keep in mind for next year are Wednesday the 4th and Thursday the 5th of May 2016. I do get your emails and I do read them, right? When you say, when's it coming to Brisbane? <laughs> um, there is a possibility in the future we could do that. Uh, we do make it free to attend. I do know it's a big cost to go down to Melbourne to, to do that. So, um, um, you know, uh, um, we, you know, I'm listening, I suppose, is what I'm here to say, right? And uh, uh, we'll see what we can do in the future. But, uh, but coming along, coming along to that event, I think, is, um, uh, is fantastic. Um, most of the uh, sponsorship now has been sold, I'm pleased to say. A couple available, most of it sold. Uh, in fact, Liam, you're doing the coffee carts, I think. Where is he? Up the back. There you go. Um, uh, we put, this is the ex exhibition floor, we put the sessions on the floor so that people don't have to take a cut lunch and go somewhere else to actually go and attend a session and there's a fantastic buzz on the floor for, for, for everybody sort of is all together. Uh, you'll see that most of the exhibition space is sold. There are some booths left so if you're interested in exhibiting uh, it's the place to be. To finish, uh, I'd like to thank you for your fantastic support this year. When we uh, blew the whistle and called you out, you responded in droves, actually, right across Queensland. It was fantastic. Um, uh, I'd also like to thank the fantastic staff at the Australian Solar Council and the Energy Storage Council. Lorraine, you've been absolutely fantastic, you know, on dynamo to actually drive the, uh, the Energy Storage Council forward. So thank you for your hard work. Um, if you're not a member, I hope that I've given you some good reasons to join. Uh, members direct where we focus our attention. I hope that everyone has an absolutely fantastic Christmas and New Year, comes back refreshed, ready to hit it out of the park when it comes to battery systems in, uh, in 2016 uh, and take advantage of the, of the opportunities that that, that that provides. Thank you. <laughs>